Today on Delmarva Life, we're headed west along the Nanticoke River to the largest city within Sussex County, Seaford. As do a lot of places on Delmarva, it has a rich history peppered with prominent names. Once you get to that point, you are now walking in the footsteps of Harriet Tubman. From the past, we look to the present. It's different from what everyone else has. There's nothing else here that's, most people, yeah, they either want to be on the water or they're used to living on the water and this gives them that, that lifestyle that they're used to. And now to the pampering you'll find in Seaford. We're doing highlights, the blondes, the reds, the dark colors. And that's just the start of it. Swedish massage, deep tissue, um, chair massage, pregnancy massage, uh, aromatherapy, hot stone. And then our focus turns to some of the fabulous food you'll find in Seaford. We always have veal and duck and fish and shrimp and scallops and steaks and filet. Oh, yeah. Lots to see, do, eat, and celebrate. So let's get to it in Delmarva Life's small town series, Seaford. <laughs> Welcome everyone. We have another small town series today. We are taking you to Seaford. You know what I can say? Uh, I lived there for a while. Yes. A few years. And what a wonderfully engaging, fascinating place that is very dynamic. Yes. It has changed so much over the years and continues. Yes. It, this is going to be a neat show. Yeah, and as you're going to find out today, there's a lot to Seaford, both in the past and the present and the future, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we're yeah. going to tie, so we're going to touch on all of that. So let's get to know the Western Sussex County town just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Seaford is situated at the head of the Nanticoke River, a place that had been inhabited by the Nanticoke Indians for more than 6,000 years. The first record of a European to explore the head of the Nanticoke was in 1608. That was when Captain John Smith set out to explore the Chesapeake and its tributaries. Yeah, Seaford is named after the town of Seaford, East Sussex on the south coast of England. As you see there, a decade before the Civil War, William Henry Harrison Ross built a plantation. His Italian Renaissance style mansion still exists today. Following the Civil War, 1865, Seaford was incorporated and by the 20th century, Seaford had become one of the peninsula's most important economic sites. In 1925, the poultry industry became important and Get this, in 1939, the DuPont Company chose Seaford as the site of the first nylon plant in the world. Seaford became known as the nylon capital of the world. Yeah, and just after the turn of the century, the 20th century, a group of concerned citizens met in the Seaford Town Council room to discuss the organization of a fire company. That meeting led to forming of the Seaford Volunteer Fire Department in 1901. Now the first fire was fought December 18, 1901 in a high street building. Now during the early years the department's equipments consisted mainly of ladder trailers and hand-drawn hose reels. The first motorized vehicle was purchased in 1921. Amazing. Mm. You know to go along with that uh, the city of Seaford uh, was also the first community in the entire state of Delaware to offer the nationwide 911 emergency telephone number. The Seaford 911 Center dispatches fire, ambulance, police, city utility calls, and all requests for assistance and handles approximately 10,000 911 calls every year. Now, in trying to save a little money, uh, a recent proposal to close the 911 Center and rely on the county dispatch services was tabled. And there are a lot of people happy about that because there is such a community that not only those who serve in the 911 center, mm -hmm. but the people who live in the community feel like eh, this is a personal touch. You know sure. where I am and what I need. Exactly, yeah. Well, the location of Seaford along the Nanticoke River gave it connections via the Chesapeake Bay to expanding urban markets of the nation. On December 11th, 1856, a line connecting the Delaware Railroad to the banks of the Nanticoke River was opened. 
Seaford experienced a period of unprecedented growth and expansion. Now, the lines were eventually extended to the shore of Cape Charles, Virginia, creating further economic prosperity to Seaford and the surrounding areas. Now, today, Seaford continues to grow and to flourish, and that is thanks in part to the Downtown Seaford Association. The DSA is an association of businesses that are located in and near Downtown Seaford and friends of Downtown who want to offer support to the development of Seaford. The association promotes downtown businesses through monthly meetings and activities as well as events that bring people to downtown. Uh, the group also works with the City of Seaford and the Greater Seaford Chamber of Commerce. The DSA organizes the city's annual Halloween and Christmas parade. Yeah, now Christmas parade, one of the biggest yes, in the it state. Is. Uh, the major east-west road in Seaford, Route 20, Stein Highway. Stein Highway. And, yeah. uh, but have you ever wondered why they call it that? Well, it's named for Samuel J. Stein, a native of Austria. Mr. Stein came to Seaford in 1897. Now he was very active in the business and civic affairs of the community. In the 1920s, the state of Delaware initiated a program to improve the state's roads. The effort was initially impeded by costs associated with the purchase of rights of way. Convinced of the value of a modern rail a roadway to connect Seaford to rural areas stretching westward to the Maryland line, Mr. Stein embarked upon a personal crusade to secure the permission of affected landowners. As a result, he was able to secure the donation of necessary titles, uh, making this the first paved roadway in the state to be built without property costs. Construction was had began in 1923 uh, and it was completed in 1925. You gotta love it when a plan comes together, right? Stein Highway. Uh, Seaford football in the 70s, 80s and 90s was legendary. In fact, Mark Dickerson has been working on a docu-series called The Pit what they called the underground locker room where players would enter uh, downfield hand in hand. Uh, in 28 seasons under Delaware Sports Hall of Famer coach Ron Dickerson, beginning in 1973, Seaford won nine Henlopen Conference divisional titles, reaching 11 state tournaments and made four championship games, winning titles in Division One in 1981 and Division Two in 1983. Names like Norman Poole, Danny Short, Mike Neal, Dave Parrington, and Coach John Hollis in a program that changed boys to men. Uh, Mark tells us the docuseries is nearly complete and will premiere soon. Maybe we can get him in here on Delmarva Life. Oh, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Okay, now, you really can't talk about Seaford Athletics without talking about the DeShields family. Delino DeShields Sr. played 13 seasons in the majors from 1990 to 2002. Delino DeShields Jr. is now in his fifth major league season with the Texas Rangers. As a matter of fact, before this year's Father's Day matchup between the Reds and the Rangers, Jr., who is a Texas infielder, and Sr., who is Cincinnati's first base coach, met at home plates to exchange the lineup cards. But guess what? The DeShields family is more than just baseball. Diamond DeShields was drafted into the WNBA last year. Wow. What a family. Yeah. All right, well, we are so excited you're joining us today as we celebrate all things Seaford. We hear it time and time again. You don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So we're going to kick off the show by looking into Seaford's history. Specifically, we're going to take you to the Seaford Museum. Then we're going to fast forward to the present and then to the future. We're going to show you recently developed luxury living apartments in town. And guess what? The owners say it's only the beginning. And as important as new developments, are the long-standing spots that have lasted the test of time. That's the story of Fantasy Beauty Salon. We're going to take you there and tell you what you'll experience beyond a simple appointment at the Fantasy Beauty Salon. And if our journey through Seaford makes you a tad tired and you're in need of replenishment, we're helping you there too. Harmony Touch on High Street is the perfect place for some R&R. If you're thinking about a night out in Seaford, we've got just the place for you. Coming up, we're taking you to Bon Appetit, where food meets fancy. So much to do, so much to see in Seaford. I think we probably better get to it. We're mm -hmm. going to kick Delmarva Live Small Town Series Seaford into high gear in just a moment right after the break. So just toss your remote into the Nanticoke. You're not going to need it for the next <laughs> hour. The following Delmarva Live segments in today's Small Town Series are brought to you by the City of Seaford. Well, as we learned earlier in the show, 
Seaford has a very long and rich history, and the people who live there take pride in the city's roots. The Seaford Historical Society has taken on the mission of preserving that history for future generations to explore. So we stopped by the Seaford Museum to see how visitors can step inside and take a step back in time. Preserve, protect, and present Seaford history. That's the mission of the Seaford Historical Society, something Seaford Museum curator Jim Blackwell strives to do every day. The museum is located in the old Seaford post office that was purchased in 2001. Our museum covers from 1608 with Captain John Smith coming up the Nanticoke um, and coming into the Seaford area, probably stopping around Woodland, and um, anyway, it, it goes from there up through, up through our, the Revolution, goes through Civil War, uh, up through the DuPont plant coming, and, um, and really creating a very nice town that we have. So we're very lucky to have such a wonderful town. The Seaford story begins with Captain John Smith, but has plenty of other famous historical figures within it, most notably Harriet Tubman, who spent time in Seaford during her famous Underground Railroad journeys. There's an exhibit that tells that story. And here's Harriet Tubman, who made an escape through Seaford uh, with slave Tilly from Baltimore. And she came up through Seaford and went on to freedom. In fact, the Seaford Historical Society has offered guided walking tours of Harriet Tubman's Tilly's escape to show visitors the path taken by the famous liberator. It goes down to the River Walk, and that's the River Walk where Harriet Tubman came in with slave Tilly. And once you get to that point, the, where the public, where the public landing was for the steamboats. You are now walking in the footsteps of Harriet Tubman as you go up the hill to Gateway Park. And at the top of Gateway Park is where she spent the night. Other exhibits tell the story of Seaford's theater district. That's right, Seaford had a theater district in the Roaring Twenties. We had three theaters and a nightclub. In 1921, there were three theaters here. So we had a theater district. Something else Seaford had plenty of, bears. You can see one here. And that black bear is just like the hundreds or thousands of bears that we had back in the 1600s here. They've all, there are no more bears in Delaware, uh, but uh, we, the last one in this area was, uh, was killed in uh, like, I think 1907. Along with the good, you'll find the bad, specifically Patty Cannon. We have Patty Cannon, Patty Cannon was the worst female murderer, uh, criminal in probably America's history. Visitors can learn about when Seaford was the nylon capital of the world thanks to DuPont. Other exhibits focus on early agriculture, shipbuilding, canning, the poultry industry, and transportation. We just have some of the big topics of our history in chronological order, so it's very nice. The Historical Society also owns the Governor Ross Mansion, along with 12 acres of land and outbuildings. And then we have the new uh, Ross Station, which is a little bit like the, the train station that was across the street. And that train station uh, has been replicated and enlarged by charging a reasonable rate for weddings any type of any type of, of meeting, any type of party, uh, by char by charging people, we think we'll be able to financially survive. Jim Blackwell hopes to eventually create walking tours because the rich history of Seaford can't be contained within the four walls of this museum, giving tourists plenty of reasons to make Seaford a must-see when visiting Sussex County. 
Seaford Museum is open Thursday through Sunday from 1 to 4. You know what? You can get together a group as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've got like a bunch that just gets together to do things, set up a tour at the Seaford Museum. You I, will love it. I think one thing that we're learning about Seaford is it's one of those towns that, I mean, it had so much prosperity and still does. Yeah. But like with the railroad and the river and everything, yes. didn't realize how economically viable it was 200 years ago. 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just talked to you uh, quite a bit about Seaford's history. Now we are going to step back into the present, maybe dabble a little bit in the future. The story of the residences at River Place, it's a bit of both. The first apartment building was built just a few years ago. Certain touches give it a wow factor that residents simply love. And the owners say there's no way they're stopping at just one. Here's Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli. Imagine waking up each and every day, pouring a fresh cup of coffee, and then stepping out onto the porch to enjoy this million dollar view. Sound amazing? It's a reality for folks who live at the residences at River Place. The lifestyle these tenants are getting in this building is amazing. There's nothing like it in western Sussex County. David Perlmutter is a member of the ownership group of the apartments. He remembers seeing this site and immediately knowing he needed to buy and build. This is a site that should have been grabbed up years ago that was just sitting vacant. Um, and when we saw it, it took us 10 seconds to want to buy this property. They constructed this building about three years ago and it's stayed full ever since. It's something different. Um, it's different from what everyone else has. There's nothing else here that's most people, yeah, they either want to be on the water or they're used to living on the water. And this gives them that, that lifestyle that they're used to. Licensed realtor and leasing agent Trina Joyner of Coldwell Bankers says she fields calls almost daily from folks wanting in. Hard to resist the luxury living. You have the granite countertops in your kitchen. We have this ceramic floor tile that looks like hardwoods. A full stainless steel appliance package which includes a dishwasher in the island. Um, the way the architect designed the floor plans, each room gets a view of the river whether you're on the side of the building, the back, or the front. And if that's not enough, the ceilings are nine feet in the air, there's gated access, an elevator, and a trash chute. They can put their slippers on and just walk right down the hall and drop their trash into a trash chute. They have one, two, and three bedroom units, good for folks in all walks of life. You have the low income, you have the upper income, but there was nothing in the middle. So this is um, a good mix for those who are starting out, those that are slowing down, those that no longer want to deal with large homes. They just want to live and be comfortable. Tenants also have storage closets and washers and dryers. There's also gym equipment and a saltwater pool. This unit in particular we're showing you belongs to Arnold or A.J. Dickler, one of many happy campers. It's relaxing. They come here, they feel safe, they enjoy telling their friends and neighbors this is where they live. It's the hottest address in Seaford. Most of the time we hear from our tenants that once they're here, they want to stay here. They want this to be their last place. So that's a great feeling when you hear that. And um, so we're, we're so excited about this. We really are. So you just saw how nice this building is. Well, guess what? More of this is on the way. A second building is currently under construction and a third and fourth are still to come. And David has dreams beyond that. We'll tell you all about it after the break. Delmarva Life's Small Town Series on Seaford will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the residences at River Place, a spot here in Seaford that is nowhere near done growing. Currently, we have our second building under construction, building number two, and again, it is a mirror image of building number one, 36 units, same floor plans. We've modified four units in the building that it'll be a little different than what's in the first building, but essentially the same. We're currently already 50% pre-leased, which were, is phenomenal. The second building should be completed in housing tenants by January 1st, maybe sooner, according to David. He says the residents who live here will also enjoy a million dollar view. Building two will have, every unit will have a water view, um, whether it's direct or side view off the balcony. Again, there will be uh, 100% water view from every unit. And then in the spring and early summer, they'll get going on building number three. They're planning a fourth as well. 
But that's not all, folks. They've also purchased the city's old power plant and will be transforming that area big time. And what we intend to put there is a beautiful brew pub restaurant along the riverfront, continue the river walk that the city has in place, and really give Seaford that shot in the arm where people want to come downtown. There's going to be a live entertainment there. We're going to have some apartments above the restaurant. Um, so I think you're going to see um, we're here to stay. Uh, and I think as uh, Seaford in the next five years is going to have a facelift. The restaurant will have a sister spot in Salisbury, too. Again, David says it'll take about five to seven years, but patience will pay off. When he looks at Seaford, he sees a diamond in the rough. There's such beauty here on this river, on the Nanticoke, and we saw the beauty and what we thought we could bring here, and that, you know, again, it's taken longer than we had originally anticipated, but things do. But I think when it's all said and done, people are going to look back and say, wow, Seaford is back, and that's what we want to do. We want people to say, Seaford is back. In fact, he's not going to give up until they do. We're committed, yes. Yes, we're very committed to Seaford. Uh, the town's been great to us. Um, the state uh, government, the housing authority, Delaware State Housing Authority, has been tremendous to work with, as well as the governor's office. David says this project as a whole has been the driving force behind other projects in the area. We've been the catalyst that started a lot of this redevelopment, and I think as we continue, I think other people will be coming to Seaford and investing dollars here as well. He's excited to see that happen and to see where that takes the town. I truly want to see this town come back to what people thought of Seaford 10 to 20 years ago, um, where it was a thriving town. Um, and basically it's back and people want to come here. They want to live here. They want to work here. And, um, and I think with what we're doing, the type of people that are retiring here from up e north, northeast. A lot of people want to move down to Delaware and don't know where to live. I think they're going to say, wow, I really love living in Seaford. And Seaford will love having them. And get this, as if all that wasn't enough, David says they're also going to be putting boat docks on the river behind the apartments. Wow. Isn't that fantastic? That's going to be beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mm. For more information on where they're located or how you could land in one, visit delmarvalife.com. So a little bit earlier in the show, we touched on Seaford's history, much of that history documented inside the Seaford Museum on High Street. But there is a whole lot more history between the walls of the Fantasy Beauty Salon. For nearly 50 years, this has been one of the spots to get yourself spruced up, but to also form friendships. 1025 WBOC's Corey Phoebus had the pleasure of stopping by to meet the crew and to get an overview of the place where as soon as you walk in, you're treated like family. I want you to think back almost 50 years ago, downtown Seaford, High Street. People were walking up and down the streets. There were plenty of shops. You could have gotten your hair done. Well, a lot has changed in that almost 50 years. And my new friend, Sarah Lee Thomas, was here for 48 of them and in business. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank, Thank you for stopping in our small downtown Seaford. Now, you've had Fantasy Beauty Salon for 48 years. Let's take a dive back in history a little bit. What was it like 48 years ago here on High Street doing hair? Well, a lot of things have changed. Uh, many years ago, our clientele was mostly ladies and children. Well, now then, we've added men, so that, that's been good. And also, it, we come to our hairstyles. Years ago, we were doing uh, roller sets and pen curls, and today we're doing a lot of blow dry and curling art. Also, hair coloring has greatly changed. Uh, years ago, a lady's hair was the same color all over. We're now there, we're doing highlights, the blondes, the reds, the dark colors. So that's been good. And uh, we really have a lot going for us in our downtown. We have the beautiful Nanticoke River, and I expect any time to see that developed a little more than what it is now, and it's gonna happen. We just need to be patient. 
Now, one of the coolest things that I'm seeing here in downtown Seaford is 48 years ago, you had your hardware stores, you have beauty salons, and you have different shops of that nature. And then, unfortunately, there was a lack of jobs due to DuPont, as you talked about. Yeah. But now we're kind of on that slope back up to creating more family foot traffic. We're having a good time on the weekends, and it's just becoming a more fun, family-friendly, upbeat place to be here in downtown yeah. Seaford. Now, when 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 you've started your business, did you think that you'd stay in this same location for all these years? I have always loved downtown Seaford and High Street, so I've never been tempted to move off of High Street. Why leave? Everything's going all That's so right. well so far. We're, we have it down here, yes. So, and you plan on staying here for a while? I'm yes, assuming. I do. We Very have cool. uh, five great hairstylists in here, and the girls. They're all good, so we just want the people to come on in and say hello to us. Give us a try. All right. Sarah Lee Thomas, thank you so much for taking time and talking with me today. This has been really cool. We're taking a little bit of a look back in time in downtown Seaford to where we are now, and I have to say, it looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Seaford. Now that's longevity right there. No kidding. How yeah, about that? Yeah, just head down there even if you don't need your hair done. A look over Seaford from Chopper 16, the town's often been described as an ideal place to work, live, and play. But we're going to amend that a bit and say Seaford is also the perfect place to relax. And what better place to do that than at Harmony Touch on High Street. In our busy lives, we often forget to give ourselves a few moments of rest and relaxation. Just a few minutes here and there can really make a big difference. And owner of Harmony Touch, Lakeisha Ricketts, has a remedy for you. Most people come basically for relaxation, but then you do have those that come for therapeutic um, purposes. They might have pain, um, arthritis, um, sciatic issues. Then there's just um, sports or athletic people. They come just to, for detention and to stretch, um, just to be stretched out for the most part. Cost and time are often considerations when talking massage. Harmony Touch considers them too. Personally, I got hurt a long time ago, and the only thing that seemed to work was massage. And so for that reason, I try to make it where anybody can afford to get, at least get a massage done anyway. And by massage, she means just about any type of massage your body may need. We do Swedish massage, deep tissue, um, chair massage, pregnancy massage, uh, aromatherapy, hot stone. We do um, foot soak foot massages also. And with each type of massage come options of length to help you fit an appointment into your busy schedule. Well, it depends on which service. If you're doing a typical chair massage, Normally it's um, 30 minutes. We do like I call lunchtime. You get um, 15 minutes just to hurry up, just a quick, just to break the tension up and go back to work type deal. Um, so that's for your chair. For a table massage, um, like a Swedish or deep tissue, you have a half hour as well, or you can do an hour or 90 minutes. Harmony Touch does not stop at massages though. Loretta does the skincare part. She does the facials, she does lashes, brow services, she does waxing, um, she does the spray tanning. If you have never heard or given Reiki a try, now's the time. Reiki is a Japanese therapy. Originally, um, it's a healing therapy or what they call it, energy um, healing. Literally, she doesn't touch you. It's basically pulling your draw. She's drawing from your own energy and um, it's for relaxation and healing purposes. And on the days where you might have a little extra time, Lakeisha says plenty of clients will indulge in more than one aspect of the spa. They'll do a like a double dip. They'll either do a, um, a facial and a massage, or they'll do Reiki and a massage, or um, that's generally, and then sometimes we'll do a special where we'll break it down and do all three. With all of these services offered, Harmony Touch will be expanding into even more over the next few months. We're building an addition to the back of the spa, so now we're um, gonna accommodate everyone or whoever wishes to have a wedding party, a pamper party, a girls' night out, birthday party, anything of that nature. So for all your therapeutic rest, relaxation, and so much more, be sure to stop on High Street to treat yourself a little. Lakeisha describes Harmony Touch as a sense of luxury 
anyone can afford. And now that the kiddos are back in school, seems like the perfect time to book your massage. We'll have information on how to do that on DelmarvaLife.com. Just click on what's happening today. We just visited a spot in Seaford that offers massages, always as a treat for the body, as is a good meal. Yeah, and there is one Seaford restaurant in particular that aims to help you feel like you're escaping for a while. Del Marble Life's Katie Zerilli takes us now to Bon Appetit, an eatery that locals have loved for nearly three decades. If you're in the mood for some fine dining in downtown Seaford, here are two words for you. Bon Appetit. No, I'm not just suggesting enjoy a meal. I'm saying go and check out Bon Appetit, the restaurant, where class is taken to the next level. Additionally, like, you know, the fact that there's a butter knife, not many restaurants have those anymore. And you have a fork and a knife for different courses and different spoons for different courses. Not to mention the linen, fresh flowers, and china. Karen Pedamonte and her husband have owned the eatery for the last 28 years. Longevity that she says stems mainly from loyalty. Uh, I'd like to say it's because we're really good at what we do. <laughs> but uh, Seaford's been really kind to us. Um, our landlord has never raised the rent in all of the years that we've been here. And we've just had great support of the local people. But we also draw from other areas. So even when things were, you know, maybe a little hard during the recession, we were pulling from other areas. Being an entrepreneur is important to her, as is providing something different in the community. Being creative and living your dream and driving yourself crazy and pulling your hair out and, you know, making it work and surviving and, and providing a nice place for people to go for dinner that isn't just a fast food joint. That, has its own function, but you know, you also need to be able to spend time with family, with friends. And sitting in these chairs at these tables, that time spent feels like time well spent. Yeah, I would say most people feel like we've given them an escape for the night and um, just enjoying who they're with, whether it's a business colleague that they need to discuss business with, or if it's family and friends that they need to just enjoy, they've got time to do that. They're not rushing through a meal. Speaking of the meal, let's talk menu, shall we? Even though it has a French name, you'll find more than just French food to eat. It turns out picking a favorite dish is going to be tough to do. Karen says they're committed to staying consistent, but they also make sure to keep up with current cuisine trends. We change the menu every month, but we always have veal and duck and fish and shrimp and scallops and steaks and filet. So um, I would say it's hard to pinpoint that because the menu is constantly changing. On the other hand, we sell a lot of veal because not many restaurants offer veal. We sell a lot of duck and filet mignon, and then um, my husband has fresh fish that changes every week. Her husband runs the show in the kitchen. He was trained by French chefs in New York. She herself went to culinary school there. They like that they have a different flavor than other places, and they want to stay that way. So by offering something different than what the big chains offer, we can um, have our own little niche and we're not competing with them for price because we don't serve the same kind of thing. If you're thinking of checking it out, they prefer you call ahead, but they do welcome walk-ins. Whether you're a continual customer or you stop by sporadically, Karen's excited for your bite at Bon Appetit. And, uh, some people come a couple times a week, and then other people come for just their special occasions, and then there's that new guy that you know stumbles on us and goes, man, this is great, you know, I never knew we were here. If you do come here for a meal, you can't forget about dessert. Now this chocolate mousse looks so good, I almost feel bad eating it, but I'm going to. Mmm, très bien. Back to you guys in the studio. Karen says that she is very thankful that the town has been so good to them for the last 28 years. Carol and I kind of discovered that. Mm -hmm. Well, not discovered it. It's been there for a long time. We've gone on occasionally, but uh, it, it's like suddenly become our anniversary yeah. dinner go-to. Your go-to. I love the, the, I guess you'd say the wait staff there. Mm -hmm. They're wonderfully friendly, and mm -hmm. then they'll walk away and let you spend time with who you're with, 
And the last couple of times we try, I'm no good at the selfie thing. Either. Yeah. She said, let me take that. <laughs> and she'd take the picture for us. So if you've Aww. seen that posted, it was always them taking the picture of us there at Point F. You know, Seaford is the biggest city in uh, Sussex County, right? Yeah, right, right, right. So we can't fit it all into one day. I was going to say, I feel a little incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> think we can do something about that? I think we can. Be sure and join us tomorrow. Part two of our small town series, Seaford, takes us to a few more gems you can find in the Sussex County town with a strong emphasis on the arts. We're going to meet teams that can help you expand your talents. We're also going to explore a couple more places where you're going to find fantastic food and some very friendly faces. Be sure to join us.